Hi everybody. So if you think about gears, then who thinks about gears? What you're really thinking about is motion, because gears are there to control motion. And you only really have, surprisingly enough, three elements. There is rotation, there is sliding or translation, and you can add those two together to get rotation and translation at the same time, which is, of course, exactly what a screw is. But then gears don't operate in isolation. They actually go into a machine and a framework and they're held in relation to each other. Because there, again, there are only really three ways to hold them into relation with each other. And here, where the gears lie on a plane, the axles are parallel to each other. They're like that. And if we have them in a plane, of course, we translate that motion across that plane. So if I turn that gear, what it does is turn that gear, and that turns that pinion operating what is a Geneva mechanism. And these were used in film cameras for nice, accurate control of a stop and a move. But we don't have to have them just like that. We can take those axles and we can put them at an angle to each other. Because if we put them at an angle to each other, we'll also angle the planes that they're sitting in. And this is an example of that, which is a bevel gear. So here the planes are meeting at some point, and then obviously the axles are bent at whatever angle that is. This is 90 degrees, but it can be any angle. And what that does, of course, is move the motion from one plane to another plane at a set angle. And we get that. And these, of course, are used in car differentials, that sort of thing all the time. The other way, of course, is where they're skewed from each other and they don't have a plane resistance, and that's something like this. And this is a worm gear. It's actually a one-to-one -one worm gear, so if I turn that, but that turns at the same speed. You might be more used to seeing a worm gear where you get a speed differential, but worm gears are an example of where the planes are skewed from each other. Now, these three examples, of course, are all examples of rotation, but we did say that there was a different kind, and that is translation. And one of my favorite examples of a rotation and translation is this. It's called the mangle gear. The mangle gear is like a rack and pinion and great for moving something backwards and forwards. Like that. <laughs> this is actually one of my favorite gear mechanisms, in fact. So those six principles are what gears are all about. We've got three principles governing the motion, which is rotation, sliding or translation, and screw. And we've also got three frames of reference, either in the plane, at an angle so they meet in front of the gears, or skewed to each other. And that's it. And of course, that has led to the gears that we know, which we mostly think about as being circular gears. They might be bigger, they might be smaller, but essentially that's what they are, little circles covered in jagged teeth. But if you think about what we've just talked about, then that doesn't need to be a limitation on what gears are. And for some people, that certainly isn't a limitation. And there are some weird and wonderful gears and gear mechanisms out there. This is a cube gear, which is essentially a set of bevel gears, eight bevel gears where the axles meet in the centre of the cube. Perhaps the earliest example of this was by Emmett Lalish. Emmett's also created something called the heart gear, which is pretty much the same principle. A further development of this, following an octahedron rather than a cube, is the brain gear. Here, instead of truncating the bevel gears, the bevel gears are left in place. Now, unfortunately, these are wonderful designs, but I can't think of any practical use for them apart from being a good desk toy. Instead of being totally round, nautilus gears take their cue from the Fibonacci spiral. The result is that at the very end of the rotation, the two big flat sides hit against each other before the next turn starts. It's another mostly pointless exercise, but these gears do exhibit an interesting quality. If one gear is moving at constant speed, the other will speed up and slow down during the course of its rotation. That's got to be good for something, yeah? Oval gears like these do have a practical use in devices like mechanical flow meters. The way the two gears intersect into a T-shape creates two distinct pockets of space. If the gears fit well enough together, these pockets can be completely watertight, so that when the liquid passes through the flow meter, you can use the volume of the pockets the gears create, combined with the number of rotations to calculate the volume of the liquid that passed through the device, and it can be incredibly accurate. These weird half-sphere gears are the work of Oscar van Deventer. 
He's a prolific YouTuber who designs a ton of strange gear mechanisms, basically just for the fun of it and for the puzzle of it. While Oscar's little invention here is basically a bit of a goof, it does have the interesting capability to fold 180 degrees like a hinge while the gears stay interlocked and spin on a perpendicular axis. Oscar describes it as a solution in search of a problem, but it's still pretty cool. The Venix gear is a cross-spherical monopole gear designed by Yamagata University that has a range of motion throughout the sphere. It stands for Active Ball Joint Mechanism with 3 degrees of freedom. It's been used in robotics and is truly awesome. There are several STL files available on Thingiverse for anybody who wants to try this. The mangle rack is a set of pins that a gear moves around to control the movement of an object that the pins are attached to. And it was used with great effect by the Akiyuki Brick channel to build some wonderful LEGO models that are well worth checking out. Another really interesting mechanism with no real application is the trio of interlocking pieces in a rectangular version of a mathematical phenomenon called Borromean rings. It's a sequence of three identical gears that can move when they're all connected, which isn't usually the case. It's a fun little curiosity, but I don't really see that they serve a purpose other than just being fun to fiddle with. The final one I want to show you is another one from Henry Segerman. Henry is a mathematician and artist and he does quite a lot of this stuff. It's yet another piece of art, but this system of gears includes three inseparable interconnected donut shapes, all powered by a single corkscrew spindle that juts up to the centre of the whole thing. It's not a lot of practical use, but it is a fun little desk ornament and it is a pretty awesome gear set. So I only picked 10, but I could have gone on for ages because there are so many and I tried to get a selection of gears that I thought were fun, interesting and useful. And I'm sure that people have their own favourites that I don't know about. So if there's something that you think that I should know about or something you want everybody else to know about, leave a comment and that will allow me to have a look into that and see what else is out there. Now, all of the stuff that I've covered, I've put links to the credits and where it came from in the description. So if you're interested in anything that you've seen and you want to follow it up, just go to the description. The link is right there. Click on it and it can carry you through, including to some STL files if you want to print these out yourself. Anyway, I just wanted to illustrate the idea that gears are much more than we might think they are. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.